Good morning, everyone. Let us start our meditation by looking at our posture, ideally sitting on the floor in full lotus posture. That might be a little bit difficult to sit in full lotus, so you can sit in half lotus or simply cross-legged or in Burmese style, you know, with one leg in front of the other. Make sure you are not pushing yourself, you are not uh, pushing your body. Be comfortable. If it is difficult for you to sit on the floor, you can always sit on a chair. Just make sure your back is straight, ideally not leaning against the support of the chair. The second thing we look at for the posture is the, uh, the hands. So the best would be if you can put them in the concentration mudra. So you have your right hand on top of your left. The two thumbs are slightly touching and this mudra rests at your lap. The back is straight, but the body is flexible. You're able to turn from left to right. The neck is aligned with the spine. You can slightly tilt the head forward. The shoulders are even and relaxed. A tip of the ancient masters is for your tongue to place your tongue uh, towards your upper palate behind your upper teeth. This helps to reduce the production of saliva. And finally, we don't meditate with eyes fully closed. We leave them slightly opened and we gaze one or two meters ahead of us. The eyes are slightly cast down. We don't pay actually attention to what our eyes are seeing, you know, to what whatever comes in front of us. We don't pay attention to that. It is the mental consciousness that meditates. So this is how we sit ideally for meditation. This, now that we have looked at our body, the second thing we look at is our mind. What is our motivation for doing this session? Why are we sitting on the cushion? It is to actually work on our minds, to develop our minds. In order to free us from karma and afflictions that are the uh, causes of all our problems. So we try to eliminate our afflictions as well as our cognitive obscurations in order to become fully awakened Buddhas. Only by becoming fully awakened Buddha will we be able to benefit, to guide sentient beings unmistakably, sentient beings who are going through the various types of suffering, You know, from birth, aging, sickness, old age, dying, you know, meeting with unpleasant events, not getting what one desires and being separated from one, what one likes, circling again and again, you know, when one passes away due to the power of karma and afflictions, again taking rebirth without any control. And most of the time, unfortunately, sentient beings have accumulated so much negative karma in the past. Most of the time we get unhappy, you know, migrations. We get a lower realms in which there is um, a lot of suffering. Try to generate a sense of compassion for sentient beings. You can imagine what it must be like to be reborn as an animal, for example, in the wilderness. You can imagine the pain in the hungry ghost realms, in the hell realms how unbearable it must be. Even as a human, we have experiences of suffering, can generate a sense of compassion for humans who 
are going through, you know, living in countries at war or experiencing sicknesses or disasters of the elements or conflicts in the family at work and so on and so forth. Try to generate a sense of compassion. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. So this compassion is what pushes us, what drives us. Why we are making the effort to sit on the cushion and work on our minds is because of this compassion. We have this feeling that the suffering of sentient beings is unbearable. We must do something. We want them to be free from suffering. But we don't, you know, limit that to merely a wish, an aspiration. We actually want to do something. We are taking responsibility. This is what we call, you know, altruism. I myself must do something so that sentient beings are free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Because I have this precious human rebirth. I'm born with um, all my faculties in the land where the Buddha appeared. The Buddha has taught. Teachings are still very much available. There are many followers and many supporters. So therefore I have all the freedoms, all the richnesses, all the endowments are there for me to make this transformation on my mind, to eliminate all my afflictive and cognitive obscurations and become fully awakened Buddha in order to guide sentient beings unmistakably. So this is our motivation. This bodhicitta, this wish, may I become a Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. Try to generate this most beautiful mind, this most beautiful aspiration. So now that we looked at our body posture and at our mind, our motivation, the next thing for shamatha meditation is to choose an object of meditation. So if you're familiar with shamatha, you can take whatever object you're familiar with. And if not, what I would recommend is to place your attention <clears throat> on the sensation of the breathing at the entrance of the nostrils. Try to place all your attention there during the meditation, you know, feeling how it is when the, the breath comes in and the breath comes out, how different it is, what sensations does it bring. I'm trying to remain there. We will do that for about <clears throat> 10 minutes. So for 10 minutes, try to think only of that. Because there are two ways the mind gets distracted in meditation. Two main ways. The first is called excitement. So the mind starts to wander, you know. The mind loses the object because it is distracted with, for example, the past or the future, you know, thinking about this afternoon's plans or last week's events or whatever. The mind is not remaining on the object because it is kind of thinking about other things. This is the first way uh, we get distracted and lose our object. The second way we, lose dist we get distracted and we lose our object is when we um, don't apply, you know, our mind is not we don't have enough application and we get distracted because of um, lethargy or dullness or laxity, you know, we don't, we don't put enough application and uh, the mind starts to think, you know, we kind of fall asleep, um, we fall into dullness and we lose our object in that way as well. So these are the two ways we lose our object with excitement or laxity. And finally, the last instruction for this meditation is that there are two antidotes that we need to use. Throughout the meditation, there should be a small part of our mind 
that is checking. And this mind, this mental factor is called introspection. Introspection or alertness. So this alertness constantly looks in the corner of the mind. Am I meditating? Am I concentrated on my mental object? And if not, if this alertness notices that the mind has wandered, uh, that the mind is not focused on the object anymore, then we use the second antidote, which is mindfulness. And mindfulness is this mental factor that remembers <clears throat> the object, that brings back the mind onto the object of meditation and makes sure the mind stays there. So we will try this meditation for about 10 minutes. Remember the posture, your object of meditation, the two errors of meditation, and the two antidotes. Let us try for about 10 minutes.
gently come out of the meditation. And we can dedicate the merits, trying to develop our minds, trying to progress <coughs> towards Samatha, towards a good concentration, trying to develop our mental factors of introspection and mindfulness. We can dedicate this effort so that we may soon, very soon, be able to use these tools to purify our minds, to eliminate the afflictive and cognitive obscurations. May we soon be able to see, to realize the emptiness of objective existence of phenomena and liberate our minds and achieve the state of full awakening in order to guide all sentient beings without leaving none aside to guide them unmistakably. May the precious mind of bodhicitta that does not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase forevermore. May the wisdom realizing emptiness that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase forevermore. We can dedicate the merits for the long and healthy life of our lamas, in particular, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, may he live very long and healthy and continue to teach us for a very long time. May all, all of his holy wishes become instantly fulfilled. We also pray for the swift return of our precious teacher, Lama Zoparim Priche. May we soon have the fortune to find his unmistaken reincarnation and may Rinpoche continue to guide us and lead the organization. Finally, we also dedicate so that all the wars in the world immediately come to an end. May there be no new wars, no famine, no epidemics, diseases, sicknesses, no catastrophes of the elements, natural disasters, and may peace and happiness prevail in everyone's hearts and lives. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a beautiful day, and uh, we will see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Tushita for the Guru Puja, the talk at 2 p.m. is only in person. And then uh, next week, again, we'll have the meditations at 9 a.m. And on Monday evening at 6.30, we have uh, Ajia Ji, Ajia Vidya, who uh, is coming Monday, Thursday, and again the following Monday at 6.30 p.m., both uh, in person and online, um, to actually... Uh, talk about the perfection of wisdom and guide meditations based on uh, Arya Shantideva's uh, concentration chapter. So we'll see you for that. Uh, have a beautiful day. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Uh,